Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. Happy Masterclass Friday, that is. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Photography Evangelist here at Adobe. It's my pleasure to be back streaming live. This is my first live stream of the year. So uh, happy that it's a masterclass and it's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, because I get to dedicate like almost a complete hour to a, to a specific topic or set of topics that revolve around my passion, which is photography. Uh, there's a lot going on in the world. We're not going to get into all of that today, but we are just going to kind of take a slight d um, detraction or just be distracted for an hour <laughs> on dealing with photography. And since it is a new year, I thought I'd kick the new year off right with... Um, just some cool things that you should be thinking about doing. Well, not maybe not even cool, but some things you should be thinking about doing when it comes to Lightroom. Um, there are some organizations, Lightroom's all about organization and, and especially Lightroom Classic. And there are some things that you could probably say that, you know, when you're making those New Year's resolutions that I should probably start off with a good Lightroom foundation before I uh, start adding a bunch of photos and hopefully you'll get a chance to take more photos this year than you took last year. I know I didn't take as many as I wanted to last year, but um, nonetheless, I, uh, I really um, uh, did as much as I could and hope to do more. So happy new year. I see a bunch of people already in the chat. So Sam Peterson, Marsha, Reverb, Mike, Chris Dahl is in the house. Steve, um, is that Alf Afro Afroja? Uh, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Rebecca, Mike, RB, um, Caroline, Nicholas, or Nicholas, uh, John, and Sam Peterson again. So welcome everybody and uh, happy to have you all back. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and dive into the first, this is kind of a, a mantra I've been on for years, but it's something you guys should think about. And again, not everything applies to everyone. So if this doesn't apply to you, you don't have to get in the chat and say, well, no, I think it should be the other way. Then do it the other way. Uh, so first thing I'm gonna talk about is that, uh, let's switch over to my computer. I'm in Lightroom Classic, and this is, this is a classic thing. This is not something you really have to worry about in, in Lightroom, just, this is just Lightroom Classic. Uh, in Lightroom Classic, you have the option for creating catalogs. And I know since we're start, starting off the year, some people just do a new catalog each year. And, and I never really understood that concept because I, I don't know what I shot four years ago to go back to that catalog and, and, and to look for something. And so my mantra is it's time to seriously consider, unless you have a justification not to do it, it's time to seriously consider one catalog for everything because there are some advantages. Number one, with one catalog, all your images are in one place. They're, in, they're being organized in one spot. Now that may sound more dangerous, and technically I guess it is, but at the same time, you don't have to think about which catalog is that in? I need to open up the 2015 catalog. Oh, maybe it was 2014. You don't have to think that way. You're thinking in terms of, I'm managing my photos. I have tons of ways to manage my photos with collections and collection sets. And even if I'm doing uh, client work and personal work and family work and work work, I can still organize them all in one catalog. The other advantage to organizing in one catalog is that you have the uh, option to sync your photos, sync uh, smart previews to the cloud, and you can only do that from one catalog at a time. So you can only turn that feature on on one catalog. If you have multiple catalogs, the other ones won't have that turned on. So that's probably, the, that's when I finally switched over to one catalog just because I wanted to take advantage of having my, my images that I chose on my mobile devices way back when Lightroom Mobile first came out. So I said, oh, time to, time to combine those three catalogs into one and go from there. Now, whenever I tell people that, the very next thing people ask is, um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> somebody saw my to-be-deleted uh, collection. We're going to get into that one, too. Uh, uh, or Amanda saw that. So uh, the, the very next question people ask, well, okay, I, I agree, or I'm ready to do this now. How do I get my images into one catalog? I've got four catalogs. I've got ten catalogs. How do I do it? Uh, well, first you have to start with the catalog that you want to be the one catalog, whether that's a brand new one or whether it's one of the 10 or five or whatever that you like the most. So whatever one you pick or whichever one you create, 
that's the one you open. So let's say this is the catalog, that's my main catalog and I want everything to be in here. The next step you're gonna do, and I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have an example for this because I've, I haven't done this in years, is you're going to go up to the file menu and you're gonna choose import from another catalog. So that's gonna give you the opportunity to pick catalog number two, do that one, catalog number three, do that one, catalog number four, until you've done them all and they're all imported. And this also gives you a chance to kind of clean up because you can pick and choose from those other catalogs which, which collections you want to bring in, uh, which individual photos you want to bring in, or you could do it all. So it's up to you. If, you, if the, all of the images and all your other catalogs are important, then you would just bring them all in. And it will maintain the edits this way it will maintain the organization this way. So you'll be bringing in those collections, you'll be bringing in all the organization from all your other catalogs. So um, that is the way to combine multiple catalogs into one when you're ready. Uh, so that's my first mantra. The second mantra, and this is just whether you're using one catalog or multiple catalogs, it doesn't matter. The next mantra is, it's time to get used to using collections. So. Lightroom, Lightroom Classic has this paradigm of folders. These are folders under the folder tab up here in the upper left hand corner, folders. And then you have collections. Now what's the difference? Why they can both, they, you, when you click on one, they both show you photos. So what's the difference? The folders are where your physical images reside. It's just mirroring whatever's on your hard drive. If you go to your hard drive and delete 10 photos, they will be deleted. And if you delete 10 photos out of Lightroom, they will be deleted out of those folders. So just think of this as this all Lightroom is doing is mirroring your operating system. It's saying, okay, you imported uh, a folder called pictures and in, those, in that pictures folder, you imported all of these different ones. So if I go to, for example, editorial, it would show me the uh, the editorial shots I did for KFC for uh, Adobe Stock. So uh, that's showing me those 8, 118 photos. Now, if I click on one of those photos and I hit delete, I think I can safely delete this one, I get a choice of remove it from the cat Lightroom catalog or simply delete it. So when I say delete, it's gone. There's only now 117 images in that folder. And if I go out to that folder on the hard drive, there's only 117 images in that folder at least the ones that Lightroom knows about. So this, this is really representing what's on your hard drive and what you've told Lightroom to care about. Now, at the same time, I have collections. Now collections are Lightroom's gift to you. Lightroom's way of saying, hey, don't worry about managing things in the individual folders. I'm gonna give you a way that's, that's kind of non-destructive to let you organize your images any way you want. So maybe I did an editorial for KFC one day and then I did an editorial for McDonald's the next day. Well, I would probably have each folder of images labeled, you know, KFC or editorial KFC or editorial McDonald's, but then maybe I want a best of my favorite picks that were from McDonald's, my favorite picks from KFC, my favorite pick, picks, picks from wherever. And then I can organize those in a collection that doesn't move them or change where they are in the folders. So your folders, you need them. They are what really, that's, that's where your images really are contained, but you don't need to worry about uh, organizing them in that way. The only thing you should be going to folders for are when it's time to get rid of images or when it's time to move images to a different location, which we're gonna get into as well. So that's why I usually keep the folder area turned or collapsed because I'm not really doing anything in there on a day-to-day -day -day basis. I'm doing my work, I'm doing my day-to-day my, um, -day organization in collections. So first mantra, one catalog, <laughs> one catalog 2021, that should be your goal. Second mantra, work in collections, not folders. Or I should say, organize in collections, not folders. Collections give you the ability to have as many different collections named as many different things as you want with no penalty. I can have the same photo in multiple collections. 
But if I put the same photo in multiple folders, I'm physically duplicating that photo on the hard drive, taking up more space. So collections are golden inside Lightroom. Classic. Now, just so you know the difference in Lightroom, the other version, <laughs> you have there are, there's no concept of folders that manage your uh, images because your images are, in the minute you import them, they're immediately update, uploaded to the cloud. So the only thing you have is this thing called albums. So albums are the exact same thing in Lightroom as, co li as collections in Lightroom Classic. So albums, synonymous with collections. So same thing, you manage, create your collections, have as many collections as you want, put the same folder in as, in as many different albums as you want because it doesn't take up any extra space. So I, I have, um, this is, I'm looking at all my photos now. So if I were to create a new album with that one folder, uh, that one photo selected and I called it um, my dog, because that's what that is, that's my dog Lisa. And I were to in include that one photo, it's gonna create that new album with that one image in it. And I could always go back up, but go back up to all photos. And there it is, all photos. And I can say, hey, I got more than one picture of my dog. And I can go ahead and just bring in another picture of my dog. And so that way, now that album is managing or organizing those two photos. So I can rearrange them. I can edit them because I, all of it's non-destructive, whether I'm in Lightroom or Lightroom Classic. So albums and slash collections are what you should be working in and organizing. And in, in Lightroom, you really don't have a choice because it's only about albums. But in Lightroom Classic, you have um, the choice of working in folders, but you really shouldn't be. You should be working in collections. So that's tip number two for the new year. Tip number three for the new year. And this is, an, this is probably the most important one of the whole day. What's your backup strategy? <clears throat> Here's how I got into backing up. One day I just, well, first of all, I had a hard drive crash and I didn't have a backup. I kind of taught me a lesson. This was many, many years ago. But I lost everything. I literally lost everything on that drive. Like all gone, start from scratch. You have nothing. This is way back before syncing and cloud and internet and all that. So I just lost all my documents. I lost everything on a hard drive. Um, and that really started me on the backup trend. But then one day, even, even though I was backing up, I was like, if that hard drive crashed, uh, now I'm years later, if that hard drive crashed today that I'm working on, how much would I be able to get back? And when you ask yourself that question, how much will I be able to get back? and you don't have a good answer, or you're like, I don't know, then you don't have a good backup strategy. So whatever, I'm, I'm not here to recommend which backup strategy you should use, but what I am gonna recommend is a strategy of everything that's important to you should be in at least three places. And one of those three places should be offsite. Now, that could mean as being as simple as I'm going to take all my photos and copy them to two hard drives and put one hard drive upstairs and one hard drive downstairs. Okay, that's two of the backups. The third backup, or that's, that's actually two places, three if you include the main hard drive they were on. The third place needs to be somewhere outside of your home or office because something could happen to your home or office. Heaven forbid, fire, flood, hurricane, tornado, theft, whatever it could be, it doesn't make sense to have things all backed up in one place and then that one place gets destroyed. So you need at least one copy of everything somewhere else. Now, back in the day, when I lived in Michigan, I lived walking distance from a bank. So I decided I had this removable hard drive system set up that once a week, I would walk down to the bank and swap drives. I would just un unplug the backup drive that was in the house that was backing up every day, walk it down to the bank, put that one in the safe deposit box, get the old one, come back home, plug that one in, let that one update for a week. So at least in that scenario, if the house got damaged, destroyed, whatever, 
I would have, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have anything older than a week. I, I, in other words, I, I would be able to at least go back a week. I may not have anything current up to that week, but I could, I could lose a week's worth of work and be able to go back. You know what happened though? You start out with a great idea, like at the beginning of the year, I'm going to walk to the bank once a week and swap that drive out. And then one week you don't do it for whatever reason, you're traveling, you forgot, whatever, you just didn't do it. Now you're two weeks behind. And then something happens again. Now you're three weeks behind. And all of a sudden that weekly backup strategy that you were using is no longer effective because you're, you just didn't stick to it. You just didn't do it. So my, my second recommendation to a strategy is something that's automated that doesn't really require you to have to remember to do something. So now instead of me walking a physical drive to a safe deposit box, my backup strategy is a cloud backup. So the cloud backup service that I use, I don't know if I have it on this demo computer, but it is, um, I use a cloud backup strategy from a company called um, Backblaze. I was, I was almost forgetting the name. Backblaze, B-A-C-K-B-L-A-Z-E, I believe. Back, and again, I'm, I'm, not I'm not here to recommend Backblaze. I'm here to recommend something to use. So Backblaze is what I use. It automatically backs up um, the drives and folders that I designate. You pay per computer, I think. Um, and it, um, it just automatically backs up those folders on a daily basis to the cloud. So that way, once it's finally backed up, because it's going to take a while to send that much data up, but once it is backed up, those images, those documents, those whatever are backed up. And if something happened disaster-wise to your home office or whatever, you get a new computer, you get a new whatever, you log into Backblaze and you bring it all back down. And again, that could take a while. And some companies will even, you know, you can pay to have them send it to you physically on a hard drive and then you just plug it in and, and get back to work. Um, but whatever cloud backup service you use, you should be thinking about one for da disaster recovery. Now for your photos, since I'm a classic user, I'm responsible for where my photos are backed up. If I go to Lightroom, however, the minute I import an image in, it is backed up. It's backed up to Adobe's cloud. So full resolution, JPEG, raw, DNG, whatever you shot, TIFF, whatever you import it, is backed up. So if this computer hard drive died today, I would be able to get a new hard drive, get all set back up, and these 54,000 images would come back down. They'd be available to me. So, or not come back down. They'd be available to me because it doesn't keep everything on the hard drive. But I, would have, I wouldn't lose any one of those 54,000 images if this drive died right now. Um, and some of those are smart previews, so they're not full resolution, or a lot of them are smart previews. So just keep that in mind. But if you're using this version of Lightroom, that is the advantage, is that the Lightroom cloud version is backing up everything you import into it off-site. So that way, those images are protected. And you can work freely across multiple devices and know that they're backed up. But keep in mind, it, it's, you, you know, it, every situation is different. I, you might not be able to afford to use this version of Lightroom if you have thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of raw files because you pay per terabyte of storage. Backblaze is um, cheaper because it, I believe it's, it's pay one price per computer and it's unlimited. I believe, I can't remember, but it's, it's fairly cheap for storage. So whatever your storage um, scenario is, whether it's this, whether it's Backblaze, whether it's in, m any of the other ones that are out there, pick one <laughs> and use it and know that the next time I ask you, if your hard drive died tomorrow, would you be able to get everything back? And you say, sure, I would plug in this drive and get everything back. Or I'd plug in that drive and get everything back. Or if those drives got damaged, I would just go to the cloud and get everything back. And when I say everything, I mean everything that, that you care about. So backup strategy, that's, that's the next big thing that you should be thinking about. Now, in the meantime, let's not talk about just disaster of your images. What if something happened to your catalog? What if your catalog got corrupted? Would you be able to just simply restore that? And again, 
This is a lesson I learned hard, almost the hard way. Luckily, I, I, was, I was okay. I never used, prior to, I think a year ago, Lightroom's ability to back up the catalog. Why? Because I was already backing up my catalog with the rest of my computer. Like I, my computer was on a time machine backup, backing up every hour, the whole drive, anything that changed. And so I figured, well, my catalog's already getting backed up. Why do I need another one? Until one day, something stopped. I forgot what it was, but something just literally stopped working in Lightroom Classic. Like it just wouldn't work anymore. I was go to the menu, choose it. It just wouldn't do anything. So I quit, relaunch it, reinstall. It just wouldn't work anymore. And then it dawned on me, oh, well, maybe it's something corrupted in my catalog. So I went up to the file menu in Classic and I chose to um, optimize catalog. Figuring that would clean it up and, and fix whatever it is. Now keep in mind, I, I couldn't remember how many months ago I had done that. <laughs> so when I ran the optimize catalog, which does an integrity check, it told me that my catalog was damaged. Uh, and of course, I began to freak out because it wasn't that I didn't have a backup, which I did. It was, well, is the backup damaged? Is the backup cor catalog corrupted too? Have I just been backing up a corrupted catalog for the last two months? And that's when you really start to, to think that it's not just a matter of copying the data. It's also a matter of ma in making sure that the integrity of the data that you're copying is good. Backing up a corrupted catalog and restoring a corrupted catalog still gives you a corrupted catalog. So that's, that's the day I started really paying attention to what Lightroom could do for me in addition to my regular backups. So um, I optimized the catalog and it says it was last up optimizing um, at the um, end of last year. And uh, it, it finished and it worked and it was great and it repaired it and I was back up in business. But it was just, it was just waiting for that progress bar to finish repairing the catalog that was freaking me out because if it would come back and say it couldn't, I mean, I would, I would, I would have to kind of just start over. I would, I would have to, uh, you know, create a new catalog and hopefully get everything into it and maybe I'm going to lose some edits or maybe I'm going to lose some images. I don't know. But it was terrifying to think that um, I could have lost everything just because the catalog had not been optimized or, or had not been repaired in months. And if I would have restored from a backup, I would be restoring a bad catalog because who knows how long it's been in that state. Now, this is a manual process. You just saw me go do it. You just saw me go up to the file menu and optimize my catalog and it just worked. It, it, it did a good job. Nothing's wrong. But we don't want to do manual processes if we can avoid it because you're just going to re not remember to do it on a regular basis. So this is what I started doing after that scare is I went up to my catalog settings and I said, and this was, this was set to never because I didn't use it. I said, you know what? I'm going to start backing up the catalog once a week. And so this means that I don't have to think about it. Once a week, when I quit Lightroom, it will do a backup. Now, that sounds good, but aren't you backing up the damage again? No, because this backup also runs that optimization. That's why the last one was 1220, because I hadn't launched Lightroom Classic on this machine since then, or a week since then. So it um, hadn't, hadn't done a backup and hadn't done an optimization either. So when you do it here, Lightroom's not only making a copy, uh, a copy of your catalog and compressing it, it's also optimizing it and checking it for damage. And that's something no other backup, Backblaze won't do that, Time Machine won't do that, none of my other backup software will do that. This is a Lightroom specific feature. So in addition to backing things up regularly, I also perform this at least once a week or when quitting Lightroom. So now, once that's turned on, um, and this is starting off your new year right, you've turned that on now, and every week it's creating that backup. So when you quit Lightroom, it creates a backup. But where? And what happens next? <laughs> I 
So it's going to create that backup here, but let me go to my operating system. It's going to create that backup in the same location as your catalog in a folder called backups. So here are my backups folder. And again, there's that one it did on 1220. And there's the one it did on 1218. And there's the one it did on 127. And there's the one it did on 12 or 12.1. And you, as you can see, it's kind of doing them once a week, except for these two, it did them back to back. Well, that's taking up space, right? Because each one of these folders has that backup in it, and that backup's almost a gigabyte. So if I keep doing this, if I keep going, it's going to just chew up a bunch of space on my hard drive every week. I'm going to have 52 of those every year at minimum. Um, this is the other question you need to start asking yourself. If I do the backup once a week, once a day, once a whenever, how long do I need to keep them? In other words, I definitely want the backup in case something happens. But if I go all the way back to October 23rd, how much work have I lost? Like, it, it won't have any of the things I've imported in the last three months. It won't have any of the edits I've done in the last three months. It won't have anything I've done in the last three months. Is that okay? And the answer is no. That backup's too old now. So what I tend to do is I tend to keep, and this unfortunately is a manual process, I tend to keep the last three backups. Because anything prior to that, yes, anything prior to that is probably too old because I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna go back so far that I, you know, it won't really matter. Now, you could probably keep a really old one as a disaster just in case, you know, at least you won't lose everything. But, you know, how, um, how, do, how do you, you know, is it worth keeping something so old that you would have lost six months worth of work? And probably the answer is no. Uh, so I keep the last three months and there we go. Next up. Um, so we threw away old, old copies of the catalog. Now, you saw me do that manual optimization. When you do the manual optimization, uh, there's a great Lightroom ca Classic plugin that automatically cleans up your old backups. Awesome, Jan. I didn't, you know, he put the link to it. So great. There is a way to not have to do it manually. Uh, and it's a Lightroom plugin. So that's awesome. Thanks for putting that link up. So if you are having any kinds of other issues with Lightroom, meaning it seems slow all of a sudden, like I said, in my case, a feature stopped working. I don't remember which one it was. But things just don't work the way they used to. When in doubt, optimize. Now, again, if you're backing up regularly and you're doing it via Lightroom, it's doing the optimization anyway. That's why when I did mine, it just did it. There was no problems found. But if you're running into any kind of Lightroom classic weirdness, go ahead and uh, click the optimize catalog. And that usually will clean things up in the catalog. Um, so there is that. Next up. Let's talk about your um, let's talk about your organization and what to start doing in terms of older photos. First and foremost, since we're starting the year off right, what's your organization look like? So if I go to mine, which mine's a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more to it than the the average photographer, because I, I I do demos and I do teaching, so I have a demo collection so forth and so on. Um, but these collection sets are really my first line of organization. So for example, if I cut out the ones that have nothing to do with real, I mean, they're, they're not work related, I would have family, friends, home, and um, concerts, which I, I don't know why that's a separate one because I've shot concerts before. And I would mainly have at the very bottom here, um, travel and Terry White photography. Those are the main collection sets that I would say is represents my, my work. Someone's at the door, my work. Um, inside of those collection sets would be all the different collections for the things that I do. So for example, if I were to twirl down events, these would be all the different events I photograph. So uh, ad week, um, 
D3 Expo in Florida. So a, a family member's grad party, which I should probably move that to family. Um, how design conference, all these different places I've gone and done event photography. And so I could easily find, if I know it's an event, I can easily find probably those photos just by going into my events collection set and then narrow, drilling down alphabetically to the event that it was. So I, I see a lot of people spending time on keywording. And I'm not here to knock keywording. There's keywording is a very important and specific thing for people that need to be able to find individual images based on keywords. But what I'm here to say is that I used, when I first started using Lightroom, I used to spend an inordinate amount of time, hours after each shoot, keywording photos for that just in case. I'm looking for a guy wearing a track suit, wearing Adidas shoes on a Sunday, on a sunny day outside next to a brick building, blah, blah, blah. So I would spend an inordinate amount of time putting in all those manual keywording keywords. And what you have to ask yourself is not, is it a good idea or not? Is it worth the time or not? For I would say for all of those keywords that I put in and spent hours doing back in the day, I rarely ever was rewarded for that time. In other words, oh my God, I was looking for that guy with a tracksuit on that day and I, I just typed in those keywords and boom, there it was. There's the image I was looking for. That would be the reward <laughs> that you actually use them at some point and were able to find what you were looking for. And if that is you, meaning you take the time to do the keywords because you're gonna wanna search on them one day and you're gonna find your images, by all means, keep doing that because that works for you. It didn't work for me because I was taking all this time putting the keywords in and just never using them. Like never were running into those situations where I needed to be very specific to find an image that I couldn't find any other way. So for me, the organization is collections, collection sets, and naming the photos themselves. So that's another thing that I, I'm sometimes remiss at doing. But in a lot of cases, um, for example, if you look at these images, uh, this particular model, her name is Tukey. And so if I was ever looking for Tukey and I didn't remember what collection or collection set it was in, I could just do a search because I renamed the photos with her name in it. So I'm always going to find her no matter where her images are, uh, even if I, if I never keyword her because I renamed the images if I can't find them in a specific collection or collection set. So again, collections are my way. You can certainly use them in conjunction with keywords, but I stopped doing all that manual keywording years ago and I don't regret it because I've yet to be in a situation where I was searching for something I couldn't find and had I keyworded, I would have found it. So if you are in that situation, by all means, keep doing it. Um, so in this case, these two photos are not named. So I could go up to my, um, my da, 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 photo menu and I want to come down to, I never do it this way. Da, 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 da. I want to, sorry, the library menu. Come down to rename photos. I always use the, the keyboard shortcut. Rename photos, um, moon over lake. And um, it will automatically increase the number. So in case I have 220, 2000, it'll just number them accordingly. So I'll just go ahead and say moon over lake, click okay. And now, um, now I've got those named. So if I didn't put these away in a right collection and I was searching, you know, I remember taking this shot of the moon over the lake, I could always just search for moon or search for lake and these images would come up. So it's, it's my way of doing a simple keyword just in the title for the thing that I'm most likely to search for. When you rename the file in Lightroom, is, is it that only in Lightroom? No, renaming an image is renaming an image. So those are now changed in the operating system in those folders as well. Very good question. That always comes up, Eileen. 
is that um, renaming, even if I do it in a collection, is renaming them on the hard drive. Moon over Paradox. <laughs> yes. Um, will you remember to search for moon? If I'm looking for a moonshot, probably going to remember that one. <laughs> but if I were uh, looking for trees, then I'm, these are not going to come up because I didn't keyword these as trees or forest. Uh, then these are not going to come up. So keywords, great. If you need forest, night, lake, shimmering, moon, darkness, whatever, those would be great keywords for this. And if you were searching for, I don't remember what the shot was, but I remember it was at night, search for night and you'd find all your night shots. Again, it's totally up to you. Um, oh, did I, oh, you were talking about, I, I did a typo. Now I get it. I renamed moon. All right, let's take the extra O out because that would cause it not to come up. Now we fixed it. So keywording or titling, make sure you spell it the way you, you're going to look for it later. Good catch. All right, um, next up, let's do, um, let's talk about smart collections. So there is one thing I never, I also never understood that people do sometimes. And this is this goes all the way back to Lightroom 1.0. Lightroom 1.0 organized everything by date, by default. You could change it, but by default, people brought their images in and they were organized in different folders by just the date. Like, not the name of the folder, not the name of the model or the location, Paris or Detroit or whatever. It was just 2018-12-15. If I can't remember where I store things, <laughs> what, what catalog, what images, what, what collections I'm gonna they're in, how in the heck am I ever gonna remember a date? I never understood dates for organization. Number one, the date is in the metadata. So if I look for in the metadata for images that were shot on a certain day, I'm gonna find them anyway. But I never understood organizing the folders by date because Two days later, a week later, two months later, I'm never going to remember what those dates were ever in my life, unless it was a specific anniversary or holiday or something. But just a random date in the, in the year means nothing to me. However, there's one exception to that rule for me, is that while I don't organize folders by dates because they don't mean anything to me, I do like to look back on the years that I photograph things. So if you go back, I have this collection set called years. And in that collection set, I go all the way back to 2006, which is when I kind of started taking photography um, seriously. So 2006, all the way up to last year, 2020. And you notice that these have a little gear next to them, which denotes that these are smart collections. So a smart collection means that I'm not manually adding images to these collections. The criteria that I use to define the collection puts images in those. So, you mean, Terry, in 2006, you only took 294 shots? No, because that would be like a day. That means in 2006, there's only 294 images that I cared about. Now, what does that mean? Since I'm, uh, for the most part, I'm a portrait photographer, these numbers represent mostly portraits or images that I've retouched. Meaning that this is 2015, I didn't only shoot 962 images. In 2015, there were only 962 images that I retouched. Big difference. I might have shot 30,000 images in 2015, but there were only 962 that I retouched. So, what I care most about is that in each one of these years, so this is 2018, these are images that got retouched, meaning they were important enough to me that they weren't just images that were shot in sequence. These were the keepers and these were the ones that actually got edited. Now what denotes an edit? And that's going to be different things for different people. For me, an edit is I took it over to Photoshop, retouched it and brought it back. For anyone else, that could mean you just did a, you did something in a develop module. You adjusted the um, the temperature. You adjusted the the exposure. That's also an edit. So it, you, edit means different things to different people is what I'm trying to say. 
So in this case, um, and, and everyone's, uh, a couple of people are chiming in how they use years. That, that's great. I, I, just not me. So if you got a use for it, that, that's why it lets you do it. So uh, Chris Dahl says, I've I use years for the main folder that than an event folder. Great. Um, um, Mandis is saying job, uh, job date. Awesome. So years don't, dates don't mean anything to me. But <laughs> if they mean something to you, by all means, keep using them. So in this case, like for example, uh, I photographed this particular, I did these photographs in 2018. That does that still doesn't mean anything to me. It's just, this is more nostalgia. I can go back to 2018, 2017, maybe look at my progress as a photographer to look at things I've done over the years, look at how many I've done over the years, but the actual, I'm not using the years to find them. Does that make sense? So let's make the new 2020 uh, collection, smart collection. Now there won't be much in it because I haven't really photographed anything this year, but let's go ahead and, and create it. So I'm going to go ahead to my um, my collection, create create smart collection under the menu there, and um, oh, hang on, this was kind of already set up because I'd already experimented with it. Let's let's get back to scratch, and let's uh, first of all we're going to name it 2021. Secondly, we're going to put it. Secondly, hold on for a minute. There we go. Secondly, we're going to put it in the years collection set because that's what it's for. And then we're going to start telling it what images constitute a edit. For me, because again, everyone's edit, what, the, what you call an edit is different. Now, I could just simply say, an edit's a PSD. So that's gonna find all PSDs ever. <laughs> so we gotta at least start with a date range. So let's go in and let's say that an edit um, is in the date range, capture date, not edit date. This is because the, these are the years I actually captured them. In the range of 2021-101, so the first of the year, all the way up to the end of the year. So 12-31. So now if I were to click Create, that's just going to find all images that I capture this year. All of them, not just the edits. Now, again, I could just simply say the next criteria is, in addition to this year, PSDs, Photoshop documents. But then I, and I did try that once. And then I realized, oh, wait, sometimes I use, um, I use filters or I use third party things to edit and it brings it back as a TIFF. And unfortunately, you can't do, give me the date, give me Photoshop or a TIFF. <laughs> so you can't do an or for some things. You either have to do all or any or none. You can't pick and choose. Sometimes it'll be these three things or this one thing. It has to be, so I had to figure out a way to do it so that I could get all the criteria in. And the best way that I found is to say, okay, well, since I can't say PSDs and TIFFs and this date range, because then it's gonna only look for um, just those things, I had to say what it's not. So here's, let's add the next criteria. So the, the next thing that it's not is file type. So file type is not a DNG because a DNG means it's not something I edited in Photoshop. It's just, that's what it was converted to or captured as. All right, next, by the way, is not. Is not, now let's do file type first. File type is not a raw file either. Because again, that would just be right out of the camera, nothing done to it. Next, or maybe something was done to it, but there's, it could be either or. File type again, and it took me a while to go through all these file types. File type is not, uh, it's not an HEIC file, which comes off, the, uh, off my iOS devices. Because again, that doesn't mean that I edit it, it just means that that's what it was captured as. File type is not, and I, cause I normally never retouch anything and return it back to Lightroom as a JPEG. So it's not a JPEG. 
And let me make sure, there's, I think there's maybe one more. Yeah, there's one more. And is not, file type is not a ping file because a ping file would mean it's a screenshot or something that I brought into Lightroom that's really not part of my photography. Oh, screenshot or ping shot, ping. All right, so that leaves video, PSD, TIFF. It can be any one of those things and that's fine. I'm okay with it being any one of those things. Now, one more thing, just as a catch-all, just as a, in case I wanna override and not include something. I'll do one more. File type is not, or not file type, sorry. Not file type, I wanna do um, keywords. <laughs> Remember those keywords? I didn't say I don't use them ever, I just said I don't use them as much as I used to. Keyword does not contain, doesn't contain the word never. Because if I give it the keyword never, that means never included in any of my smart collections. Simple, simple task. So now I've got a set of criteria that will give me all my 2021 images that I retouch in Photoshop and bring them back either as a PSD or TIFF or videos I've shot. And I could say don't include videos if I don't want those either. So that will give me everything I need for 2021. So I click create. And it takes me to that 2021 and it gives me two things. It gives me a video because that's a video that I, um, I brought into my, even though it wasn't captured in 2021, it's a video that I brought in for 2021 and it, br it brings in this one PSD file. So it brings in this one image I retouched of Lisa. Now, why only two? Because those are the only two things that meet that criteria for 2021. If I now go back up to my all photos, all photography, all photographs, and I see other images, and I were to go in and edit one of these other images. Let's actually, let's edit just another image of Lisa. So we go Command E, Control E on Windows. It opens it up in Photoshop, maybe. Let's try it again. There is, just didn't redraw on the screen. Okay, opens up in Photoshop and I do anything to it. So I use my spot healing brush and I just retouch that one little hair sticking up there. And I just retouch uh, these little spots on her tongue. I do anything, anything at all. Uh, and maybe retouch out that red collar. All right, so now when I save this, because of my setting, it's gonna save it as a, as a PSD or maybe as a tip is, if that's the default. When I save it, bring it back to Lightroom, close it, comes back into Lightroom uh, as an edit for that image. There it is. Now when I go to that 2021 Smart Collection, there it is. There's the second retouch of Lisa. So I don't ever have to do anything except for my normal work. As I retouch images in Photoshop or use a plugin that brings them back as a TIFF, they will come into this collection and I'll be able to look back just like I did on 2018 and look back and say, oh, these are all the shots I did that year. That's cool. These are all the ones I retouched that year. That's cool. All right, now we're gonna take it the other way around. I have a complex question about importing the Lightroom. Who can I ask about that? Well, it depends on your question. <laughs> you can ask it here if you want. Um, Eileen, just type it. Either I'll answer it or someone else will. All right, um, next. Since we're talking about starting off the year right, do you need every photo you have in Lightroom? That's a very sensitive subject for photographers because we never want to delete anything because we might need it. <laughs> so I created a collection a long time ago, a smart collection, that I determined as my way of finding images I don't care about. Now, what, what, what defines an image I don't care about? As a photographer, you do a, you do a shoot. You do a, you do a shoot of a landscape. You do one of portraits. You do one of products. You do one of whatever it is, whatever the subject is. You shoot 100 frames, 200 frames, 300 frames, whatever it is. Now you come back to your computer and you're excited 
and you go through your 100, 200, 300, whatever it is, and you start removing ones that are obviously bad, like, you know, flash didn't fire, eyes were closed, just things that aren't, um, that just aren't good. So you immediately get rid of those. Now you're left with maybes and good photos. So now let's, let's say instead of 100, you're down to 50. Like you have 50 really okay shots <laughs> and maybe some really good ones in there, but you have 50 that aren't bad. They just are okay. Now you, you're excited. So you go through those 50 and you pick out your favorites and maybe your favorites are 10, maybe your favorites are 20, whatever your favorites, maybe your favorites only one. And you retouch and you use that one, two, three, five, ten 10 photos and you post it on social media and you're happy or you deliver it to your client. They're happy and everyone's happy. Out of those 50, you deliver your 10 best, whatever, pick a number, whatever it is. Let's say it's 10. What about the other 40? Technically, there's nothing wrong with them. Oh, Roger's giving me a tip uh, on adding conditions in smart collections. All right, I'm going to go check that out. But he's saying if I hold down my alt when I add, when I hit the uh, add, it will give me a conditional smart collection, which I'm going to check that out. And Roger, if that's, I, I believe you, but that's the first I'm hearing of that. Anyway, um, so now you got these 40 photos that you didn't want because <laughs> you didn't use them. The client didn't want because you gave them the ones they paid for and picked out. And they're okay. There's nothing wrong with them. Now what? Do you just keep them forever? And if the answer is yes to you, then keep them forever. If the yeah, answer is yes because my contract with my client says I'll keep them forever, then fine, keep them forever. But if you're just a regular photographer out there and it's your own work and your own discretion and your own whatever, and you're looking at hundreds of thousands of images, do you need them all? Do you need every, every frame you ever captured after you've gone through them and picked out your favorites and used your favorites? And it's now two years later. Do I, this, this, this photo shoot with Tuki, do I need, you know, all of these? These I wouldn't need because these are the ones that retouch. But do I, do I need the other maybe 200 that are in that folder for her? And the answer is probably not. Especially after a, after a certain amount of time. After years go by, if there's no contractual reason to keep them, no client reason to keep them, then why are you keeping them? And I know what the answer is going to be. Well, you never know, just in case. <laughs> and if that's your answer, then so be it. But for everyone else, I have a um, I have a smart collection here called To Be Deleted. And my To Be Deleted has 209,611 photos in it. And they're not being deleted. But what that, what those, what that collection is telling me is that these are these need to be investigated. These could probably go, or you need to make a determination if they don't need to go. And how do I make, how am I making that determination? If I go up to edit that smart collection, I'm making that determination by basically, I didn't do anything to them. In other words, the rating is less than one. So that means I didn't give it a star rating. I didn't give it one star, two stars, three stars. I didn't rate it at all. I didn't give it a, uh, it's not a PSD, so that means I didn't take it over to Photoshop. I didn't edit it, because if it was PSD, that means it was important enough to go to edit. Um, the label color is none. I didn't give it a green, a red, a purple flag. I didn't give it a flag at all. The, the pick flag is not flag, so it's not pick, it's not a pick, it's not a reject. It's just not flagged. The file type is not video because videos, I probably brought them in for a reason. And the file type is not a TIFF. That means that if it's not any of those things, I probably don't need them. Now, that isn't, that's not a guarantee. That's not a just select all and hit delete <laughs> because I might scroll through them and say, like I saw some today. I was looking through that, that uh, collection. I was like, oh, no, those are family photos. I just didn't pick them, but I don't want to delete them. So you have to just decide what criteria 
is important to you enough to keep and maybe set up this smart collection um, based on whatever, maybe it's, maybe you add in another one that is um, uh, develop. It um, has adjustments or is, is false. So it has no adjustments in Lightroom. You didn't even bother adjusting it. And then you would do another one uh, in Lightroom. It has, um, it has no edits. So it, it wasn't touched at all. Then you, you probably have hundreds if not thousands of those photos. They're just sitting there doing nothing. And you should probably create that collection just to be able to scroll through them. Because as you scroll through them, you can give them a pick flag. You can give them a star rating. You can do whatever so they come out of that smart collection if you want to keep them. So just keep that in mind that um, you, you have probably, depending on how long you've been using Lightroom, thousands of photos that are just sitting there that you're never going to do anything with. And it's up to you to decide that. I can't decide that for you. Only you can, or you and your clients. All right, so I am out of time. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this start your Lightroom year off right. Um, I failed to do the one tip that I was going to show you how to move photos to another drive. So I'll do that tip the start of next week's um, masterclass, no matter what the topic is. And with that said, if you got a topic in mind that you'd love to see, go ahead and put it in the comments. And I am out because my time is up. Cheers, everybody. Happy New Year, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.